All right, so now I'm continuing with my flat color layer. I've got a lot of it filled in, but a lot of the little nitpicky stuff remains. I have references that I've opened in Photoshop that I can steal from, but I think I want another reference that will give me something a little bit more interesting. So I'm going to look for a zombie pony illustration. Let's just see. There we go. And of course, none of them are going to be as good as what I'm trying to create here. But I want something with lots of colors. Like this one's pretty nice, just for its range of colors. This one's pretty nice. I kind of like the muted quality of that, but I've already gone a different way. So you can be inspired by anything, right? Actually, I'm a big fan of the, the plants versus zombies stuff. So. so what do I do? I can save these to my color reference, save them on the desktop. Oh, this is cool. I like that. This is nice duotone color. So not only am I looking for colors, but I'm also looking at different color approaches. So this is cut edge duotone and flat color. Pretty effective. And then I can open these up in Photoshop as well. And when I do that, it's very important to arrange them. Right? But now that I have the three upscaled, now I can just move them into these different sections. So now there's two under this. Right? And I can switch between. And under this one, it's going to be two. And I can switch between. And I can zoom out. I just need to be able to steal colors. And then this one I'm going to put down here. Whoops. Yeah, why not? No, I guess I should. And you can see the soft edge duotone here. So cut edge duotone, soft edge duotone, not as fluorescent as what I'm doing, but can, can give me some nice um, examples. Okay, now what I usually refer to this phase as is kill whitey. I want to get rid of all this default white space and all the, the filled in things that, that aren't right. And having the gray background can help remind me of that. But here's one trick. If I go to um, my vector line and then I use contiguous and the magic wand and select the empty space outside and then do a select inverse and then go on my gray layer, even while it's locked and just do a duplicate command J. Oh, I have to unlock it. Thought that would work, but command J. I can duplicate just like we did for the cloud assignment, a gray cookie cutter of it, right? And that does a lot to show me the things I still have to make decisions about. And some of those I want empty. So for instance, this shape here, that's supposed to be empty space. So now the only true whites are empty space in my design. And if I want other empty shapes in my design, like maybe here, that would be like the t-shirt color coming through or the paper color coming through for a logo. I need to define all those. So I'm just going to hold down shift on my vector layer and find all of those voids, those empty spaces that don't require color. I don't really think I have any more. And then delete those out of that, that gray now notice that gray is not on my flat color layer. It's beneath it. But it helps, helps me see the challenges ahead. Now, I'm more focused on where I need my focal points. So things like the snake. 
Ah, it can be tricky. And this might be a better instance of just using a paintbrush with all my inking. Well, let's get a color for that. And I'm going to pick kind of this zombie green. Go to my flat color layer, paint it in. And then I can always decide, oh, I want to brighten that up a little bit. And maybe I actually want it to be, remember you hold down option, you can steal colors. Maybe more like that. Or maybe I even want it to be Yeah, a little more different. I want you to start with just flat, flat color, but then on top of it, we're going to be playing with duotones. We're going to be playing with um, full spectrum. You can do textures. You can do soft edge, hard edge. You can make your color as complicated as you want, as long as there is a flat color layer <laughs> below it. So make a layer above that one yeah, we'll we'll add our, our color effects on top of our flat color layer. And there's a lot of fun ways we can do that. So now, with something difficult like the snake's body with all my inking, I can just use my paintbrush and just fill it in by hand. Because it doesn't make sense to use the magic wand to select all those little shapes from the vector layer. And remember, I have all the other layers locked, so I don't accidentally add color into the wrong place. Trust me, it will happen to you unless you lock your layers. And it's a real pain to move it onto the right places. Now, because I filled it all in with gray behind, if I miss something, it's not the end of the world. Because that, that gray kind of fills it in. So now there is no, no worry of any empty space. Taking it up. All right. Let's see. And then the more I find colors to paint with, like a blue there, a red here, I'm stealing them right from my references. the more I can just steal color solutions from myself. Like the bone white for the teeth. This kind of sickly pink for the gums. And so this coloring is really basic. It's the same coloring of, of um, Charlie Brown, you know, with a yellow shirt and a skin tone, and that's about it. But it gives us a, a foundation layer to build on. And notice I am not using black anywhere, and I'm not using solid white anywhere. Though I might choose to later, right now it's about colors and flat shapes. I always think of it like stained glass. We're putting these shards of glass behind the, the letting, the tracery. Now, after I have all these flat colors, then I am able to add another layer. And I'm going to do like we did when we put our creature in our landscape. I'm going to do a, um, an overlay layer. And I'm going to use it to dodge and burn. 
And that's an easy way, a really quick way to get duotone color. So when it gets to little details like this, it just makes a lot more sense just to use the brush and color in behind. Especially when I have that default gray. But now with really defined shapes like this, it might make sense to use the magic wand with contiguous on the vector layer, select a bunch of these kind of crystal shapes that are catching light on one edge. Or reflecting it back. Select a bunch of them like so. And then fill them all in. See? So you can find your kind of efficiencies of process. And I like that I have the rainbow here. I think I need to reflect that in my kind of gemstone main here. The important step is to deselect. Remember, Command D is a shortcut for deselecting. And then how do we steal colors? We hold down Option. And then I go to my flat color layer, the only layer that's unlocked, and I can drop them all in. And though I call this phase Kill Whitey because it's memorable, provocative, and I'll help you remember. If you do this uh, recommended step of filling in the whole silhouette of your illustration with gray underneath, what you're really doing is just replacing your middle gray with something better. Yeah. I think I want a pale blue for this. Use my paint bucket, go to my flat color layer, hold down option, pick, drop it in. I have teeth here. You can see why you can get a job doing flats. <laughs> it's a little boring. but it sets up the artist for a lot better work ahead. And if it's not done well, it makes it really hard to do good digital, digital coloring on top. And when you are using the magic wand and selecting, it's good to know that it selects from the very tip of the wand. You can always just use your brush. It becomes too tedious. 